Welcome to the Buddha International Circuit. Welcome to the press test of the brand new product. If you're 28, welcome to Pardrift. Pay close attention because right about when you were born, Ducati created the monster for the first time. And today we have the fourth generation monster with us. It's brand new. It's supposed to be smaller, easier and has more equipment than any monster before it. But how is it to ride and what will new riders get from it? Let's begin. The engine on the new Monster is a 937cc 90 degree twin. Familiar? Yes, it goes in the Multi 952 for example. But it's been retuned. From the old Monster, that's the 8 to 1, displacement is up, torque jumps significantly across the rev range, peak power is higher and the engine alone is 2.6 kilos lighter. It's a brilliant little engine. Grunty, pulls hard and linear and it sounds awesome. The engine, it turns out, is also the heart of the new frame and that's why the design is a radical departure from the monster norm. Now, one big change in the 4th generation monster obviously is the design of the motorcycle. Whether it's from Varese, whether it's from Bologna and tell me if you get that reference, is a matter of debate. But having seen the motorcycle in the flesh, I can tell you that there are few things that are going on. All the monsters before this one have always had a trellis frame that ran diagonally here and the bottom of the tank was a very distinct line that ran up the trellis frame. But for the fourth generation monster, Ducati went the Panigale way, which means there is an aluminium front frame. You now have a plastic effectively subframe. This is glass reinforced plastic. It's supposed to be super strong and super light. There's a lot of weight savings in here. Everything else is bolted to the engine. So the monster effectively has become simpler in construction as well as much smaller. And smaller is important because when your motorcycle feels compact, it also feels more controllable. It's very easy to get your feet down. And together, a new rider should have a sense of greater control over it. That obviously breaks the design line of the monster a little bit. And let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea or a bad idea. But I can tell you this. In the flesh, it looks like a very, very nicely made motorcycle with excellent attention to detail. And this form actually produces a lot of function. The last thing I want to talk about is that I know that round is a shape. But tell me if you think that headlight is a round shape. As usual though, Ducati doesn't skimp on rider aids and electronics. And they're good aids invisible until they're needed and not too intrusive or abrupt when they do intervene. And as my friend Jehan pointed out, Ducati is rapidly building themselves a reputation for the most effortless stock fit quick shifters in the business. The new chassis and the tuning of the suspension etc is frankly marvellous. On the track, the monster felt like a dense unit but a very very light motorcycle. It flicks from full lean left to knee down right without effort or hesitation. It targets the line easily and accurately and in that sense it's a massively satisfying blend of easy and fun. The hardware, especially suspension, isn't very high spec but at least on track it feels superb. Monsters have always handled well. Not hard to understand, right? They have super bike derived frames as one of the key points of the monster. But what I'm shocked and so happy about on this new one is that it's not only a good handler, it's an easy, friendly handler. It has lost a lot of weight. It does make the effort you put in quite less. But there's a sense of cohesion, a sense of flow to this motorcycle that I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed here today. And I think a lot of new riders will find this motorcycle really easy to get along with, to grow their skills with and to go fast with. And to me, a motorcycle in this segment that is able to achieve that is truly special. What that means is, as middleweight 100-ish BHP sport naked bikes go, the monster is the new MVP. At least based on this on-track experience, I don't think there's any motorcycle in this performance and price region Yes, including the one you're thinking of right now, that's this confident, this sensational to ride. And we've checked. Service costs, including the dreaded Desmo service, aren't outrageous expensive either. Oh, I really loved riding that on the racetrack and I can tell you that Ducati has actually nailed it. 
I don't know what revolution the first monster created, and I don't know that the environment will support a revolution like that. But I think they've done something very, very special with this monster. Normally, somebody who's riding a 390 or an RR310, you tell them to upgrade to a 650. I'm shocked to say this, but I think they can now upgrade to this 950 because it's super easy to ride. The engine is super linear. The chassis is very, very supportive, and it's a very predictable motorcycle, which means every time you make an input, you can almost discern what the motorcycle will do with that input before it actually happens, which gives you a lot of confidence. A motorcycle that's easy to ride gives you that kind of confidence, to me, is the perfect step to larger displacement motorcycles. In that sense, Ducati have done a smashing job with the Monster, and if you're in the market for an upgrade from your 390 or something like that, you're looking for your first twin-cylinder motorcycle, large displacement motorcycle, something that will do the racetrack, go down the city roads, go a little bit of touring and all of that, don't ignore this one. This is how motorcycle updates should be done. Highly recommended. If you're 28 years old, welcome to Pardrift and play close. I'm sorry. Play. If you're 28 years old, welcome to Pardrift and play close. Sorry. There's a plastic subframe at the back. This is glass reinforced plastic. Ha, ab aapka subframe kaach ka bana hai. Oh, that's my number plays in the language.